Merry Christmas, you little rascals. What have you guys been doing to celebrate? Me, personally, I wanted to catch up on a bunch of Christmas movies, but I just haven't had the time. Running over a mall Santa really eats up your weekends. So what I did was I set up a bunch of TVs and had every Christmas movie play at once. Really gets you in the holiday spirit. But there was one that I had missed. One that I had never seen before. Probably because it's one that's... Not American. When we think of Christmas movies, the predominant amount of them are American made. I mean, we capitalized the bejesus out of that holiday, so we may as well sleep in that bed. Sorry, Jesus, Coca-Cola hijacked your birthday. But that shouldn't stop other countries from indulging in their own takes on Christmas. Besides, if America only made Christmas stuff, that eventually would get boring. I mean, no, it would all still be perfect, but I like to see a little international holiday cheer from time to time. I mean, in Japan, they eat copious amounts of KFC. I can think of no better way to honor our Lord and Savior. So let's take a look at a Christmas film from our neighbor to the south, Mexico. You're about to get educated on another country as if you're going through It's a Small World. Oh, Mexico, you may be becoming a global superpower, but you sure don't know how to make a Christmas movie. You'll get there one day. This one is 1959's Santa Claus. Just Santa Claus, that's the whole title. I've always found it fascinating when a full-fledged movie version of Santa is attempted. I'm not talking about stuff like THE Santa Claus with Tim Allen or Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, which is a clear allegory for the Bay of Pigs invasion. I'm talking about stuff like Santa Claus the Movie and so on. I think maybe a reason for this is because, at least in the West, Santa doesn't really have any sort of antagonist or conflicts. Because he doesn't need them. Fat man comes down your chimney and gives you presents, no need to overcomplicate it. People don't like hearing about conflicts when they're being holly and jolly. But in order to have a proper narrative, you gotta have some sort of conflict. Now, Santa is the embodiment of pure good, so what would be his antithesis? How about the goddamn devil himself? Yeah, so this movie is also known by the title Santa Claus vs. the Devil. I think I've heard the story in church. Now, I don't know who else you would have as a direct antagonist for Santa, but I don't know. It just feels a little extreme to have the straight-up devil. Well, anyway, let's get started. Yeah, get used to that, because pretty much the entire soundtrack is just variations of Jingle Bells. Not any other song also, not even ones about Sam himself. Just Jingle Bells. We go to the North Pole, but wait, nope, doesn't live in the North Pole. Already starting out on the right foot. He lives in outer space. In this Hall of Justice structure where he and his elves- Up, oh, wait, nope, no elves. Instead he has children. Bunch of children. Yeah, he has groups of children from a bunch of stereotyped backgrounds sing and make toys. And they all look like they just love to be there. Like, why they don't include elves is beyond me. Was it expensive to get the ears or something? I don't know. So the movie spends eight full minutes going through a bunch of different countries and continents while they all sing songs. Do, do I have to watch this? Like, do I have to watch this? No, 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 I'm done. Nope, nope, nope. So Santa spies on the children of Earth using a bunch of Cronenberg-esque technology. A satellite with a human ear on it, a telescope with an eye that reminds me of those laser guns from War of the Worlds, and this Pee Wee Herman nightmare contraption with lips that talk. This is as far from the look of Santa's workshop as you can get. This couldn't have less to do with Christmas. See, something I've always liked in Christmas movies are the different interpretations of his workshop. Since there's no concrete design, it allows the filmmakers to get creative with it. But this? This looks like a rejected Holy Mountain set. So we then go down to hell and a bunch of devils are dancing around, but before we know it, Satan makes one of his minions named Bitch go to Earth and ruin Christmas. Well, his name is actually Pitch, but it sounds like Bitch, so I'm gonna call him that for the rest of the review. Satan, who here sounds like Phil Hartman for some reason. I, Lucifer, King of Hades, command you to stop and disappear. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from such cartoons as Christmas Ape and Christmas Ape Goes to Summer Camp. Tells Bitch to go corrupt a bunch of kids into being bad to mess up Christmas. But if he fails, he'll make him eat some ice cream. And instead of red hot coals, you will eat chocolate ice cream. No, no, Lucifer. Bitch goes to Earth and tells a bunch of kids to throw rocks at windows and stuff. He then tells this very poor girl to steal a doll from this vendor. But she has a change of heart and puts it back. The moral lessons being taught here are deeper than I could ever go. 
Then there's this wealthy kid that Fitch convinces to be bad, since all he truly wants is for his parents to love him, but they're too busy being wealthy and stupid to. The parallels to Citizen Kane are undeniable. Santa is gearing up to go down to Earth, but he gets help from his assistant. An elf? No, like I said, there's no elves in this. Who else would it be but Merlin the Magician? This is the most random assortment of characters you could have. You have Santa, a devil, and now Merlin. You know, at this point, the rails are off with the logic. Why not just add a bunch of other characters? You already got a wizard, so why not add some elves? How about some warlocks or angels? How about the Noid? Can he join? Can the Noid join? I don't see why not. So Santa gets all his equipment from Merlin, such as some sleep dust and a flower that makes him disappear. Much obliged to you, Mr. Merlin. <laughs> I'll be back again to see you next year. I like to think they don't speak whatsoever all year round until he needs some stuff from Merlin, and Merlin's just, like, waiting there all the time. Santa then goes to his medieval forger for a key that can open any door, and off he goes. The kids sing a song as they load a sled with toys. This is just a mess of noise. So Santa goes to feed his reindeer up. Oh, wait, nope. Not real reindeer. They're giant toys instead. What, do you expect them to get reindeer right? <laughs> so the kids who threw the rocks say they want to enslave Santa. We can make him our slave and all his candies and toys will belong to us. Well, that took a dark turn. But then again, doesn't Santa use slave labor? Bitch moves the chimneys out of place so Santa can't slide down them. Despite there already being a hole there still. Sandy uses some of the sleep dust on the kids, and he starts delivering presents. Then we cut to Lapita telling her mom how she wants a doll for Christmas, with her mom looking frightened with guilt about how she won't get one. Is this movie actually having subtlety? The wealthy kid's parents are out at a club, but Santa comes up to them as one of the waiters to give them cocktails they didn't order, claiming it'll make them remember that they love their son. Without questioning it, they drink and rush home to spend quality time with him. Meanwhile, Bitch tries to lock Santa out of this house by making the doorknob super hot and lighting a fire so it'll burn his ass. And instead of Santa doing anything about the actual hell spawn on Earth, he just shoots a dart from a toy into Bitch's ass. This movie just straight up turned into Home Alone for a second. Bitch sabotages Santa by cutting a hole in his bag so all his sleep dust and his disappearing flower leak out. That comes to a head when he goes to the house of the three bullies and a dog chases him up a tree. How's Santa gonna get out of this one? The entire family, including the kids, rush out of the house ready to waste Santa, but luckily he's able to escape. The police and fire departments also show up, but while they're there, they blast Bitch with the fire hose, and he runs away. So long, back to hell you go. The movie ends with Lapita getting this massive doll, Santa goes back to Bespin, and we all live happily ever after. God bless us, everyone. Santa Claus is one of the weirdest and most morbidly curious movies I've ever seen. The first movie is entertaining enough as this fever dream hellscape, but by the halfway mark it becomes an absolute slog to finish. The story genuinely feels as if it was written by a six-year-old. Just writing Santa, Merlin, the Devil, and all the other nonsense in, they just crammed in whatever they could find to put together a narrative. You probably see how bad it is, so drink some love booze and fire it up with some friends. I had never seen a Christmas movie from Mexico before this, but if this is the best they got, I don't know if I want to revisit them anytime soon. Maybe I'll try a different country, like Germany. I've always wanted to see a cinematic depiction of Find the Pickle. Such a fun, innocent game. And with that, this pretty much wraps up everything I had planned for this year. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and of course, have a happy and safe Christmas.